Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 46 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are talking about that according to an Urban Institute report, there is a significant imbalance between the types of jobs available in the US and the number of people who have the corresponding education to apply. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another training show this week. Yeah, and it's great to have this as a topic. We always talk about the effectiveness of training, and now we're talking about the imbalance and people understanding what skills are needed to actually fill the jobs that are out there, which is direct to the problem. Really is a problem. It really is a problem, and I think it's um, you know, I think the the, the bigger companies um, such as like AWS, Azure, and Google, they are underpinning that education now. And I think there's a we're, we're definitely seeing uh, more of an influx to the market of trained people. Uh, so that's always a great sign. But uh, getting back to the topic and and the the question for you this week would be, uh, how can we align the needs of the industry with the training? Yeah, I think this kind of comes down to having a tactical understanding of where the industry is going. And so, in other words, uh, you know, everybody goes, well, we're moving to cloud, you know, therefore we should have more cloud classes. Well, what specifically does that mean? Is this AWS classes? Is this architecture classes, cloud security classes, IoT classes, edge computing classes? And I think we're failing the students in the fact that we're not understanding what the needs of the market are. We're not providing the training that we need within the community colleges, the universities, and even in the private training at, at tri private training institutes that are out there. And people are looking for certification, they're looking for deep understanding of particular types of technology, and people who are able to step up and do the job. They're actually not looking for uh, college degrees or master's degrees, you know, like they were in the past. It's in essence. If you have an associate's degree, fine. If you have a high school degree and you understand how to work, you know, an AWS instance and, and configure S3, you know, all the better. Um, they're going to really kind of, you know, train you on the job moving forward. And so we really need to think more tactically uh, in terms of what we look at, what the training needs to be and how to align specific courses and specific skill set augmentation to lead ahead of the training. And I think that we just don't get that. We just think that, you know, everybody needs to understand U.S. history and, you know, economics, and I, I'm not putting those courses down. I think that's all a part of having an education. I certainly was part of my college, uh, you know, courses when I went to college. But ultimately, it would have benefited me more if people would have taught me how to program in, in C++, or I'm dating myself, of course, but it taught me, you know, taught me how to uh, do SQL and relational databases. You know, instead, I really got, you know, general basic, you know, understanding of databases, database theory, things like that. Things that I really couldn't use when I got into the um, into the job world until I had the tactical training to figure out where things are going. And we have to figure out how to link the two together, and I just think we're not doing a very good job right now. So, in your opinion, what would be the number one thing that you would change if it was if it was down to you and the buck stopped with a decision you could make? Uh, what would you do? I would say that the college and universities are incentivized to adapt to the to the needs of the industry. And so the universities are going to have a horrible time with this because, you know, quite frankly, they deal with research grants and things like that. And they really kind of focus on things that are non-training aligned and the ability to get people the education that they need. And so I would say that the states would would award state based colleges and their ability to align themselves to the needs of the business and have certain metrics to measure that, you know, say the. You know, at University A and B would be, you know, uh, you know, get a grade of B and get a grade of C. And you want to go to the grade of B university because they're able to change quickly around the needs of the business. So when they launch you out into the space, at least you're prepared to get that first job, that second job, you know, with the skills that need to happen. And I think universities would, would fundamentally reject that. But I think that universities are, you know, are, are having to change around these tactical skills where they're used to teaching very strategic general purpose skills. And so all the state funded colleges basically move to that direction where they're granted uh, state funds based on their ability to kind of keep up with these training needs and keep up and line it to the industry. And I think that's, you know, having been involved with that, you know, portions of my career, they're just not doing a very good job today to do it. We have talked about some of the community colleges that are, you know, basically reacting better but it's going to have to be the state and local universities, community colleges, the part of the deal that are aligned to make things happen. The ability, also the ability to provide uh, on-demand training and basically online training. We're moving to that model fairly quickly, uh, which is good. 
but the ability to make sure those courses are up to date. And I still notice that, you know, they're the requirements to get a, you know, a, C, a, a master's in, or sorry, a, a CS degree, you know, from uh, some community colleges just require you to take some general purpose computing courses, not any detailed skills of, that you can actually use out in your first or second jobs. And so I really think it's going to have to be with this award kind of a play. It, it, this is going to cause, you know, be very controversial, I think, certainly in the States. But it's the only way we can kind of browbeat the college and universities to make sure we're aligning to the needs of the business. And it's going to be this way ongoing. Yeah, it truly is. Uh, you know, you raised a nice point there, and I think we've covered it as well before, that if the colleges or the you know, community colleges aren't delivering the right courses, they're not going to get the students they need to be supporting the whole ecosystem of the college. So it's going to be very interesting because Google have now par are now partnering with, uh, I think, about 25 or so community colleges in the US. So they're following a similar sort of suit to what AWS did earlier and uh, Microsoft with uh, Azure. So it's, it's very interesting to see um, how this is going to pan out. And I suppose within the next uh, year or two, we're going to start to see that influx coming through, aren't we, of uh, you know people that are actually getting an education that's going to give them you know uh, the money to pay the bills like we say they're going to get the skills to pay the bills as opposed to a you know a, a, a sort of a certificate at the end of uh, their academia of saying well you, you you know you've got this degree but like you say it, it's not good and it's not practical for you know getting that first job you're you're just many people with a, a general g a degree or you know some form of a, uh, education that's just very general and I think this is this is going to be a breath of fresh air for people you know being able to go to college and get a, a specific thing that's going to get you the results at the end so yeah it, you've hit some great points there yeah and I think that uh, we can't rely on the uh, um, you know the cloud providers and other technology providers to in essence drive the you know drive the training they're making investment there and I think that's all well and good but the onus really falls on the college and universities you know, to drive the, uh, the coursework that they're going to provide. And so while, you know, it's great they're making investments in that, they're doing so for their own selfish reasons because they want people trained up in their, in their, their technology so they can use their technology coming out of the college and universities. But all, more power to them because that's going to be good for their business, just like Apple, you know, put Apple computers in, in, in uh, elementary schools, you know, back in the 80s and guess where everybody wanted to use when they got out of college. Um, so... This really is going to be a transformative change into the culture and the compensation and the way these universities are funded, but it's got to happen. I mean, we have a kind of a, a, a thing going forward where, you know, people are looking to have kind of a, almost like a truth and lending thing, a truth and education thing that if, you know, you sign up for a, um, you know, some degree, you know, like uh, art history or, you know, um, you know, primitive, you know, primitive dance theory. On college and universities, and there's courses out there that are still there. And those those are great things to learn, but they're going to tell you, and you have to sign a piece of paper that you do know that when you get out of college or get out of university, that you're not going to necessarily be able to get a job very easily. And therefore, there's kind of an understanding because people are suing, you know, universities now and colleges, you know, based on the fact that they spent hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in getting an education. And there's no way they can get a working job or a paying job going forward. And so, you know, that causes a lot of dissension in the ranks. Can you imagine paying off a two hundred thousand um, dollar loan when you know college loan when you actually can't get a job to make the payments. And we saw that with the, you know, whole, uh, um, you know, kind of civil, you know, civil disobedience movement of a few years ago. And I think that's a direct reaction to the, to the uh, universities not necessarily living up the expectations of the industry. So you, you might as well start doing it now because you're saving yourselves, you're saving your students, and you're helping the, uh, the economy. Yeah, 100%. That's fantastic. Thanks, Dave. And look, it moves us on really nicely to your, your top three tips. I think we've already, I think we've already covered about eight tips uh, within the content of the show, but, but we want the top three tips. <laughs> so uh, we'd love to hear your uh, top three tips if you uh, would be so kind. Yeah, number one, understand the train the demand before creating the training plans and the course issues. And so, uh, state uh, state and local universities, as well as uh, you know community colleges, and anybody out there who's teaching people and getting paid for doing it, should look at the industry and understand what people are need into the certain job categories today. And so, in other words, what's hot, hot not only in technology but in the health sciences and you know other things that people are you know getting involved in the financial services area, the CPAs, things like that. And then 
backing the particular requirements into some sort of a course planning that goes forward. That doesn't mean you throw away the the the, the more obscure things in the bachelor's of arts degrees and things like that. I think there's there's certainly a place for that, and people who have a passion for that should be able to train in that. But I do think that they're failing the the more uh, fast paced stuff, the technology stuff, uh, and not necessarily doing what they can to um, to make sure that their students are going to be armed with the, with the weapons that they need to go off and you know get a job and you know, have the skills to pay the bills, as we keep saying. Understand how to best deliver training, and so this is really important. Uh, I think the days of going to a classroom, you know, driving. If you're a commuting student driving 50 miles or, you know, having to get a dorm room or, you know, all these sorts of things, you know, certainly, again, have a place. Um, but they should have options as to never to walk on a campus ever again. So everything is done, you know, over online. I, I think that uh, that technology has come a long way. You know, I do courses online and I think that it's a good way to teach people because you can stop things. You can go back and listen to lectures over again. You can take tactical quizzes at the end of the end of the uh, uh, the lectures to make sure that you understand what's going on. You can have study plans that'll point to external resources. It's basically all combined to a, into a portal that's going to be much more organized and much more natural way of you understanding things going forward. There, that doesn't mean that classrooms should go should go away, but I think the option should always be there where people can do the online based training. I understand that colleges and universities are going to be a social experience and you know, a lot of fun, things like that. But there should be a way in which you can do it in a cheaper way because you're not taking resources to the university. You're not eating in the cafeteria or sleeping in the dorms uh, to get the same sort of a training online. It, all, it should be basically the same analog, uh, whether you do it online as whether you do it in the classroom. And then understand that this would be an ongoing process continuously improving. So I've seen that people, college universities will suddenly adjust um, like every, you know, five to 10 years in terms of the uh, technology changes. So they'll start putting client server and they'll start picking service oriented architecture and now cloud computing and they'll leave it alone for five years. And so they'll offer the same, you know, silly courses without the improvement going forward. And so they almost look ridiculous, you know, when they're offering courses in, you know, Java and not Python, they're, you know, offering courses in, um, uh, you know, Windows 95. And I, I've seen those things all the time or old versions of Excel. Yeah, somebody should really kind of keep up and make sure the trainings are, are kept up and the training courses are kept up and constantly improving that stuff going forward. And they're not used to doing that. And it's a hard process to do. But ultimately, if you're going to live and survive as a at any kind of an educational institute where it's a private institute, whether it's state funded community college, university or whether you're a private training company, you're going to be basically rewarded on your ability to do that. And students are going to start voting with their dollars, which I think is the right thing to do. Yeah, it really is. And, and I mean, that, that last point you said about the, the, the revision of the, of the courses, making sure it really is up to date, that is so key. Um, yeah, Dave, look, the, the top three tips, awesome as ever. And, you know, thanks for being part of the training show this week. Really appreciate your time. That's great to be back. Uh, good luck overseas. Thanks very much. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, obviously. So check us out there. Come and connect. And uh, if you do subscribe to the channel, which we hope you do, uh, make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos coming up. So thanks again. And uh, continue watching the videos. We've got Australia and the C-Suite show as well this week, which is awesome as we do every week. So thanks for watching and until next week.